What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over what I'm calling our stage one tow build for the 6.0 power stroke. Okay guys, so I get a lot of questions asking about what are the best upgrades for my 6.0 power stroke? So my most common question is probably what do I need to do to make my 6.0 power stroke reliable? Or what are some good upgrades for somebody that's towing with their 6.0? So this is gonna be our stage one tow build and I'm gonna have links to as many things down in the description as possible for you guys to be able to head over to Amazon and just get what you need instead of having to search all over the place for it. Now we are not gonna get into big power mods. Some guys do like to tow with a lot of power. We're not gonna get into that. That's gonna be a follow-up video, kind of a stage two build down the road. But in my opinion, if I were to buy a, if you could buy a brand new 6.0 power stroke tomorrow, this is gonna be the mods I would do to it to get it ready to tow my camper. Number one on the list also happens to be the best sounding upgrade for your truck, and that is a exhaust system. Now, if you're talking specifically for towing, I know a lot of guys, including myself, run four inch downpipes. For a towing application, I would actually do something a little bit different. I'd go with a three and a half inch downpipe to a four inch exhaust out the back. If you wanna to go to a five, you can, that's not gonna be a big deal. But that downpipe can play a bit of a role in how your truck performs. Namely, it's gonna give you slightly faster spool up than a full four inch downpipe. Sure, up top it can be a little restrictive, but for a towing application where you're not pushing your power number too crazy, it's not gonna be a restriction there. And it's gonna give you that great sound we all love from the 6.0. But most importantly, it's gonna help lower your exhaust temps while towing, especially pulling grades. Now, since you guys have already watched what to do first when you buy a 6.0 power stroke, we're not gonna get into monitoring. If you need a refresher on that, there will be a link in the first comment down below to that video to go over some of the first upgrades that I recommend for your 6.0 power stroke. Also, one to the next thing, and this is one of those things I like to do to trucks. It's not a necessity, but I get asked about it all the time, and that is air intakes. For a tow build, they're not 100% needed, especially on this stage one we're talking about here. Really, all you need is the factory intake. Make sure you have a clean filter. If you do like to upgrade, there isn't really a downside to it other than you need to maintain them a little more. They do require cleaning and re-oiling or changing of the filter depending on dry versus washable but that's a whole other issue to take care of. But that's a whole other issue we're not gonna get into today. Now moving on to your intercooler pipes here. The hot side intercooler pipe's fine, but I would make sure you have fresh set of boots on there and clamps that everything is nice and tight. You're not losing any boost. But the main one to worry about is really that cold side pipe. A lot of these trucks came with a plastic cold side pipe and that's gonna give you issues. You wanna make sure that you have a metal side pipe I do not recommend the cheap Chinese kits. I recommend the higher end stuff. So like No Limit Fab, MBRP. I'm missing some. I don't like the Mishimoto pipes personally. I just don't think their fitment's great. And I haven't been impressed with their clamps. Now, since we're on this topic kind of of the charge air system, intercoolers I get asked about a lot too. And I think the CSF 6028 is a great upgrade. That being said, in this kind of tow build, I don't think it's gonna be needed unless you have issues. I think it's a very economical way of upgrading without breaking the bank, but definitely not necessity in my opinion at this level of build. I do think it will help drop EGTs just a little bit, but again, we're talking a relatively insignificant amount. Remember, we're not going for big power or the optimum performance here. We're just saying, what do you need done to make a reliable tow vehicle here? Now, one of my all time favorite upgrades for any tow build is a set of airbags for your rear. I have them on my white truck. I've towed without them and I've towed with them. I've towed with 3500s, I've towed with 250s. And I gotta tell you, even the 3500, while it didn't sag in the rear, the airbags perform just immensely better. The overall ride is more comfortable. It takes the bumps in the roads much better and it actually helps provide a lot of stability that isn't otherwise there. As for brands, I've used Firestone on my white truck and I'm probably gonna run Airlift on this truck. I have friends that run Airlift and it's not that I don't love my Firestone, it's really for a comparison between the two to let you guys kind of see the difference and decide for yourselves if you like Airlift or Firestone. Again, both companies have pretty good reviews. There's also instances where people talk terrible about each. In my experience, I've had a lot of luck with Firestone and two of my good friends that tow pretty heavy in New York, they also run Airlift and they've had a great experience with them. Moving on to injectors and guys, in this level of build, stock injectors are gonna be great. 
Honestly, any upgraded injector, while I do think provides a little bit of a power boost in some builds, I do think you also have to do a lot more to make it reliable at that power point. And you're gonna detune them anyway, so stock injectors are gonna be fine. The other thing I get a lot of questions about are turbos. And do I think there's turbos that perform better in towing? Yes, I'm a fan. I've tried several different turbo setups now and I have my preferences. We're not gonna get into them because for this build, guys, honestly, save your money. Unless you're planning on doing a full build down the road, you're just not gonna see enough increased performance from a turbo with essentially a factory truck, at least not to the same degree as when we get into the stage two tow build, which I think is gonna be very interesting for a lot of people. That does kind of push the boundaries a little bit more. Again, guys, we're trying to think just the utmost reliability and performance all kind of in one. The only thing I will say is I do really like a 10 blade turbine wheel when I'm pulling grades. I, in my experience anyway, the 10 blade just does really well as far as keeping exhaust temps down. And that 13 blade, while doing pretty good, can lead to kind of some higher temps down the road. And again, I'm talking about maintaining speed or accelerating pulling grade. The 13 blade will do fine. I'm not saying everyone out there should jump and go get a new turbo because I said the 13 blade isn't as good in that instance. The 13 blade has other characteristics that are favorable, such as cruising speed and down low. They spool faster and they require less RPM to get going. So it's kind of a little bit of give and take. Where do you want your power and where do you want your overall efficiency at? Me, I really like the 10 blade. It helps for some of the hills I pull, especially up in New York. On my trip to South Carolina, the 13 blade would probably actually be better. But again, it just, they each do certain aspects really well and uh, they're kind of, there is no in-between for the two that's a compromise. But bear in mind, if you do wanna to go to the stage two build, that is where you would wanna start looking at turbo upgrades, and I have two in mind. We're not getting into them today. So to recap, parts that are staying factory, yet are always asked about injectors, air intake, turbo. Leave them alone. And your intercooler, unless it blows, then upgrade. Intercooler gets an asterisk, because sometimes they blow and it's kind of a bad day. So I'm not saying it's needed, but maybe consider a CSF upgrade. There's two different ones. I'll at least have a link to one of them down below that is a factory replacement with cast aluminum end tanks welded on. I do recommend it if you're looking. It's not necessarily an upgrade in performance, it's an upgrade in reliability, and that's what we're after, but definitely not 100% needed but there's enough horror stories about people blowing holes in their intercoolers towing that it at least warrants being talked about. Now onto the stuff that we are changing in the engine bay, that is your cold side intercooler pipe definitely needs changed out. Make sure you have a metal one. If you already have the metal one, just make sure all your boots are good. If not, replace them with new clamps and boots and do not cheap out. Please don't buy the crap from China. Now to the exhaust, which gives us the sound that we all love and it drops our EGTs, which is a bonus. It sounds good and gives us that performance upgrade and a little more top end flow, so that's a good thing as well. That is an exhaust system. I would definitely go for a tow build, I would go with the three and a half inch downpipe. The four inch downpipe, you're gonna lose a little bit of that bottom end, kind of what we were talking about with the turbos, but overall it'll still drive well, but a three and a half inch downpipe's easier to get into place, and again, it tows slightly better. And then I would go with a four inch out the back, as if I can find a link. The last time I looked at links for exhaust, I couldn't find anything on Amazon, so... And my number one top modification for towing, and that's airbags, guys. I gotta tell you, this truck, if I bought this truck brand new, I would put airbags on it. Obviously, they don't make this truck anymore, but even if I bought a 3500 dually, I would airbag it. I like them that much. Even though springs are great, leaf springs are great, guys. I'm not knocking them. I like the setup overall but airbags are just so much better in my experience with the loads going over bridges when you hit that bump and you kind of get your trailer rocking the bed a little bit. The airbags just help with that so much better, even better than heavy duty springs have. So that would be my recommendation there. The last thing we're gonna talk about is tuning. Uh, tuning is a big topic in the six liter world. And I always get the question, am I gonna blow my truck up if I tune it? on factory head bolts? The answer is no, you're not gonna blow your truck up. You might blow head gaskets though, and that's that's a pretty crappy day. But honestly, guys, typically when head gaskets blow in a six liter, even towing, you'll be able to limp it home. It might not be a fun tow, but you can do it. 
I'm not advocating to tune your truck without head studs. Be aware that you can definitely blow head gaskets. I did it for about 100,000 miles. I ran various tunes primarily. I wanna say 80, 85% of that time was a tow tune. Specifically, Power Hungry Performance's 40 horsepower tow tune was a great tune and I loved it. Tuners to consider for tow tunes. Truck Source Diesel has some really nice tunes with great drivability, Power Hungry Performance. Gearhead has great tunes and great reviews. Quick Tricks has pretty good reviews. This Blessing or Blessed, Perfor Blessed Performance, that's what it is, has been getting a lot of questions and uh, in the six liter pages, a lot of post time, forum time, whatever you want to call it. It's getting talked about quite a bit, so that's on the list to review down the road. Warren Diesel also has great reviews as well. So those would be the places I would go for my tunes for my six liter right now. Some of those have been reviewed on the channel. Check out our tuning playlist if you're interested. Now there will be a part two to this video and that's gonna go into a little bit more depth. That's gonna get some of these honorable mentions I'm gonna go over right now, such as exhaust manifolds, intake manifolds, air intakes, turbos, injectors, intercooler pipes, intercoolers, water meth injection, and of course, nitrous. Wait, wrong video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this upload. Shameless merch plug. There is a new store on Teespring. I launched new merch there. It's a little more user-friendly than the Amazon version. The Amazon one's gonna stay up because this t-shirt is actually really cool and I like it and it's super affordable too. Some of the products over at the new merch store are a little more expensive, but I am able to put more time in designing them. We have a new shirt that just released SOB. I'm waiting for them to come. The shirt says SOB and then six obros underneath it. I think it looks kind of cool, I think it's funny, uh, but I also have the sense of humor of a small child, so what's that tell you? Anyway guys, we have long t-shirts over there, hoodies. One guy's been asking about hoodies. They're finally on the Teespring site, and the Teespring stuff's gonna allow me to kind of like launch, uh, there's something I believe about discount codes I can get for you guys. So there's some stuff coming down the road with those things that I will be getting for you in the near future. Uh, as soon as I kind of get more familiar with it, at least I'm pretty certain it was Teespring that let me would let me do like custom discount codes as I saw fit. Anyway, more on that later, guys. And if you haven't already hit that like button, what are you waiting for, guys? Hit that like button. And of course, as always, smash that subscribe button, turn the bell on for notifications so you don't miss any of the 6.0 Bros content. Whether that is our live feeds, uploads, premieres, whatever we're doing, you don't miss any of it, guys. I'll catch you in the next upload.